the Hard Rock Roxino Northfield Park presents The Rizzo Show. And now your host, Tony Rizzo, with co-host Mike Polk Jr. Hey, hey, welcome everybody to The Rizzo Show. Our brave leader is in Florida right now, as you may have heard down there in the worst state in the United States of America, as far as I'm concerned. And we've got the best Browns analyst in the greater Cleveland area, the general of the Hundred Year War. Please welcome Mr. Tony Grossi, everybody. How about him, right? Thank you. Look how thrilled they are in the back. Tony, thank you for... Thank you for filling in. Thanks and, uh, for having me. Coming in and, and filling in for Riz. He's down in Florida. Have you spoken with him? Is he doing okay? I hear he's doing fine. Yeah, as have, as have I. He's, he's killing it down there. And Florida is the worst state. Can you agree on that? Bug-infested Florida. Bug-infested, terrible, swamp hole Florida. But people love it. They love getting down there away from this weather. This is part of his protest. Tony, NFL free agency begins March 13th. So... Let's talk a little of Browns right out of the gate. Let's talk some free agents. Um, Browns have a bunch of free agents who are probably, some of them we're, we're going to not have on the roster this year. Uh, and who do you think out of these free agents is still going to be here and who's not? Let's start with Tyrod Taylor. Yeah, you know, they, they knew that he was going to be a one-year thing pretty much. His contract is up. And I think uh, uh, in Tyrod's case, he, he wants to go back to starting, right. finding a team perhaps as a bridge quarterback. I don't think the Browns ever considered him more than a one-year stopgap. Uh, it turned out he only started two games. Yep. So it's uh, thanks for your efforts. Move along. And, and he was a good teammate by all yeah. accounts. Uh, and then we also have uh, our other quarterback on the roster uh, since we lost Bogan. Mm. Uh, is sure. Drew Stanton. And Drew Stanton, is he still going to be uh, on the Cleveland Browns? He's still under contract. Uh, he he uh, will be 35 years old this year. But... You know, he lightly used last year. We didn't see him in a regular season game. I think the Browns would be comfortable elevating him to number two hmm. or uh, and then acquiring a younger quarterback, kind of a developmental guy. I think you're always going to see, even with the presence of Baker Mayfield, you're going to see John Dorsey always look for uh, young quarterbacks that he could perhaps trade over time and, and become an asset for the team. And isn't that a nice position to be in for once, where we're just like, let's get a bet, let's get a quarterback for down the road. We are we are never in that position. No pressure. And it's pretty exciting. Yeah. If you could have your dream free agent quarterback though to back up Baker, who's available right now, who would you go after personally? Oh wow. Um, you know, I'm comfortable with Stanton, and yeah. I'd like them to, to draft a, uh, a quarterback in the middle rounds and, yeah. and try to make something of him over time. Okay. I, I wouldn't invest too much. You know, Baker's sturdy. He's, he's dependable. Yeah. What we saw as a rookie, he's, the backup is not going to play. And if he has to play, you're, you're probably not the trouble. same team. You're probably right. in trouble. I wouldn't mind a nice Josh McCown back in this town, actually, frankly, because that guy's still... I, yeah. I just, he's still playing somehow despite being 115 yeah. years old. Um, moving on to Jamie Collins. He gets a little bit of heat for taking some plays off. He's one of our bigger contracts. You remember when he signed that contract and we were just like, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, but that's not a Browns move when we sign a big deal like that. What's going to happen to him? Then? Well, you know, that was the other regime, and he was supposed to be the first evidence of them moving forward right. and, and time to acquire players rather than to keep cutting players. But, again, that was another regime. And his guarantees are up in that contract. He'll be entering his third year of that new contract. There's a window there. If you want to move along from him, it doesn't cost you that much on the right. salary cap. I would think that he's a player that the Browns are having serious consider a conversation about moving on from. Uh, but they have some issues at linebacker. Right. You, you don't want to really shortchange you yourself. Depth. And it's yeah. one, the, the question there is we have all this cap space still. Uh, yeah. I think we have the, like the fourth most in the league right now or something. And is it okay to splurge on some of these yeah. guys that maybe, you're right, he doesn't earn that contract, but you still need some co bad contracts where these players are producing. And, you know, some of these decisions might, might be uh, aided by the new coaches on hand. Mm -hmm. You know, so in the defensive case, it's Steve Wilkes, the new defensive coordinator. And maybe he takes a look at Collins and says, you know what, I really want him another year at least. Let me, let me work with him. Or it might be the other way. You know what, I don't see anything there. So I think the new faces, uh, the new sets of eyes will determine some of these uh, but, answers. Looking at offense, uh, we've got wide receivers who are kind of on the bubble for us right now in free agency. Uh, Rashad Perriman, is he a priority? Yeah, I think he's a guy that the Browns would love to bring back. He's a free agent. Uh, he, he's got a sense of loyalty because this team gave him his chance, uh, his second chance in the league after busting out in Baltimore, and, and he's, he's gotten a new life here. 
uh, problem, maybe not a problem, but he's got an agent, Drew Rosenhaus, who believes in testing the market. Right. Uh, the Browns are free to sign him right now, but it's not getting done because the player has to want to. And that kind of brings up a question, a question that I've had that I hope you, you will probably have the answer to this. With a contract like Perriman, where we gave this guy a chance, and um, you know another one with Robinson on the offensive Greg line. Greg Robinson. These yeah. are one-year deals that we gave these guys after they have kind of didn't do anything in the league for a long time. We gave them this chance. Why don't the Browns and teams like that, is it impossible to write into the contract and say, look, we own your rights for next year as well, when they're desperate like that for a different team? Why isn't that done more often? Well, they could have signed him for two years. And then couldn't but, they have but, just not picked up his second-year option? Yeah, yeah. That, so why that, wouldn't we have just done that in case the, it worked they out? Didn't, they weren't sure. These were two guys taken in the same draft, high in the draft, who had not produced for yeah. former teams. Uh, but, but they proved themselves here, and I think Greg Robinson is another player the Browns absolutely want back. Yeah. He's got a different agent, you know, a, a different decision on his part, and I think he's more likely to return sooner than Burchard Are Herman. you scared at all of that last year? He had eight good games for us, really, of that being a fluke, or do you think that he really turned a corner here? No, a lot of people saw that in him. That's why he was, what, the second overall right. pick of his draft. Uh, and, and, you know, he did very well. He, he really stabilized that side of the line and coincided with the Freddie Kitchens becoming a coordinator, mm -hmm. Baker taking over and taking command. Uh, Baker feels real comfortable with him. I think that's a pretty good uh, uh, endorsement for yeah. them to go a little oh, yeah. bit so overboard. They're to, listening to, bring to him, him a lot, yeah. Baker. Well, probably. the proof is also on film, and he did very well. Yeah, he led the team in holding penalties, but it's better than getting your quarterback killed. Uh, we've got franchise tag coming up here where you have to do this by, I believe, March 5th, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, yeah. And um, so you have, we have Browns who we could franchise tag. Is there anybody worth doing that who would Not be? really. This is for the, uh, for, for the players whose contract comes up, who's uh, Baker Mayfield or, or, or uh, uh, Miles Garrett mm -hmm. in, in another uh, era, not now, but but no, there, there's no one, not yet. Now, they're in a fortunate position. You don't want to have to use that right. either. Yeah. Uh, the only time the Browns have used it is to franchise Phil Dawson I a couple that. times. Again and again. The kicker. You know, the yep. kicker is the, is the cheapest franchise tag value. So that sounds about that's right. That's why some teams use it on their kicker. You're heading out to the Combine pretty soon. Yes. What are you going to be looking for out there? What kind of, what's that experience like for you? And can you really see when you're out there, like, can you really see what you should be looking for? What I'm saying is you say, that's the guy I want on the team, or is it just more, you have to go for the press? No, we in the media get, go to the Combine for a different reason than the teams do. Right. We, we're not so concerned about the measurements or the weights or, the, or even the workout. No, uh, we're there for the interviews right. and, and uh, uh, having a conversation with these players and, and listening to them. You know, it'll be very different for me. The Browns aren't yeah. looking for a quarterback except for a backup. Uh, they're, they're drafting 17th right now in the first round, not at the top of the round. Right. So it'll be a different experience. It reminds me of the 80s, which I can only remember vaguely. Sure, me too. <laughs> but uh, it'll be mostly to interact with defensive linemen. That's who I think will be uh, the position the Browns center on in the first pick of the Well, game. I hope you have a better vibe there this year because Lord knows you deserve it. I know you've been <laughs> through some rough ones. Uh, last thing before we go to break here, uh, let's talk about Kareem Hunt's um, suspension. Let's move past the moral question right now. Mm -hmm. I think that's been argued pretty well. But how long are we looking at right now, in your opinion, that he, he'll be sitting out? Well, supposedly the NFL is considering multiple uh, uh, incidents, not only the one that was captured on video, but a couple of bar fights. Um, and, and for that reason, it could be, um, it could approach double figures of games, 10 games. I've heard anywhere from six to the full season, 16 yeah. games. It's going to be somewhere in between there. And that was all in one year that this happened. Yeah, to yeah three in the span incidents. of like seven months or six months. The interesting thing, though, is I hear that Kareem Hunt has spent a lot of time in the Browns facility. Okay. You know, he's back home living in Northeast Ohio, and, and he is free to visit and, and work out on his own. There's no coaching going on, but he's acclimating himself to his new team, and that's seen as a positive sign. If you had to guess, though, do we see him play for the Browns this year, and if so, what game? Take a guess. I, I'll guess yes, and I'll guess uh, in December sometime. Okay, that'd be fun to see. Not a bad little running back combo we'd have no. by then. Uh, hopefully the Browns are in the playoff hunt this season. I have a hunch they are. Coming up next, it's Oscar time, everybody. What's the best movie title for the Browns' upcoming season? We're going to tell you when we return. Can't wait. Mm. 
just not the same without Tony riffing on the bass guitar. <laughs> Don't you miss it? Come back soon, Riz. Uh, welcome back to the Rizzo Show, everybody. Uh, since it's Oscar night, we have decided to look at some of the best picture winners, uh, which these are the movies that would describe the Browns' upcoming season. Um, our producer, Kate, put this together, and this thing's uh, dynamite. We've got The Hurt Locker. Is that adequate? I hope not. Braveheart. Yes, they are. Um, the Greatest Show on Earth. That's a possibility. The Best Years of Our Lives. It's so far, Browns wise, for a lot of the millennial ones. And The Lost Weekend, I hope that's not the case, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Moving on, here's, uh, we decided to pick some other titles for our friends in the AFC <laughs> North. Uh, for the Steelers, we've got Mutiny on the Bounty, as you can imagine, stuff's going wrong there. For Baltimore, it's The Departed. And for the Bengals, obviously, Gone with the Wind. So, do you think those are all adequate? Very, very on the mark. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't have minded, like, a, you know, Return of the Living Dead or something <laughs> like that for the Browns, but I guess that didn't win an Oscar ever. What are you going to do? For movies to real life, Tony, how shocked were you when you heard the rumors <laughs> about our boy Patriots owner Robert Kraft being charged with solicitation of prostitution? Wow, this was a bombshell that came out Friday. Yes. At, Friday morning, late morning. Who reported yeah. this? Uh, well, they, uh, uh, it was first reported out of Florida, but okay. then the uh, uh, Jupiter police chief or somebody came mm -hmm. out and announced it wow. and, and named uh, Robert Kraft uh, uh, as, as the biggest name so far in this in this uh, scandal. But It'll suggested. be a scandal in the NFL. Sure, but suggested that there are also other people involved with bigger names than Robert Kraft. Yeah, supposedly. That's tantalizing, Yeah, isn't it? supposedly these will come out. Apparently there is a video available, too. <sighs> I know you'd be interested and, in reviewing that. No, I'm good. That. Yeah, that's, I can wait on that sex tape. Um, <laughs> uh, but isn't it funny, though, that I was, I was saying, like, I, as I get older, my libido decreases. And, but I'm still, I'm still like, a, uh, I'm 41 years old, and I am, like, way less uh, um, amorous than I was back then. He's a 77-year-old man getting prostitutes. What is oh, that? Oh, wow. Yeah. It, it's a it's Billionaire. A Honestly, I don't understand. Uh, but hey, I hope that nobody terrible ends up on that list uh, that, that we don't want on that list. And I hope some terrible people who we do want on that list uh, do end up on that list. Uh, well, let's talk about a very famous foot that everybody was watching. It was the fall heard round the world. Duke's Zion Williams blew out his shoe and hurt himself. Apparently the injury is not very bad, but uh, what a letdown for everybody looking forward to that game. And scary moment for people like myself who have been praying for the right. Cavs to bomb out and pick this guy up. Uh, did you watch that? And did I it did. Yeah. You know, it happened like 35 seconds into the game. Inconvenient. T t the cheapest ticket was $2,300 or something yes. like that. Imagine having that ticket just to see him. Right. A little bit of a letdown there, but... Uh, Seeing the shoe blow out like that, yeah, you know that's uh, not, I guess Nike stock has, has that, dropped as a result of that. That was not a good sign. I hope you don't have a lot of stock. I in don't. Nike. Honestly, some that whatever ten year old kid put that shoe together in China, <laughs> he, should, he's going to get docked yeah, and paid yeah, this week from two cents to tell, one cent. Yeah, I'll tell you sure. that. Uh, coming up, hey, do I do you love him or do you hate him? Doesn't matter. I guarantee you're talking about Trevor Bauer, and so will we when we return. Welcome back to the Rizzo Show, everybody. Tony is on a very important assignment on a beach in Florida right now, so we've got a more than adequate replacement here in Tony Grossi, Brown's God. Uh, but first, it's time to talk about the boys of summer, Tony. Cactus League's play just started. Big story is what's happening off the field. All the buzz is about Trevor Bauer and his interview with Sports Illustrated. He was very honest about his techniques, perhaps a bit too honest. His teammates, even uh, his grounding rules regarding relationships with women. Was the article too honest, in your opinion? Well, I do think it was too much information. A lot of info in, there. In fact, uh, that one portion about his three rules of dating, I think it was more <laughs> than we, about three, three more rules more than we needed to know. Yes. But there was also some interesting stuff about uh, fellow teammates that he thinks he's better than. And, yeah. And, and pitchers that he thinks he could help. Uh, but the Indians pitching coaches aren't doing a good enough job. And the fact that I, the one thing takeaway I took from it that was uh, the most revealing, I thought, aside from those, was that he's more interested in pitching on a year-to-year -year deal with a different pennant contender every year. Right. He's just like 
give me the ball and hire me for one year and I'll do the job for you. It was a fascinating read. He does not play. He marches to his own drum, clearly. Yes. That's the nice way of putting it. I really do believe that Trevor Bauer's on the autism spectrum and there's mm. nothing wrong with that. I think we all are to a degree. I just think he's a little bit further down than most of us. I think he has trouble relating because of that. That came through in that article. But yeah. more than anything, we're just interested to see this from a professional baseball player. We get this from musicians and yeah. actors and people all the time, but players don't act like this typically. So I think more than anything, he's what he's saying isn't that vile. It's just surprising hearing coming from a professional athlete. Well, especially a major league baseball player. Yeah. He, he's unique in that respect. There is no other uh, MLB player who gives up as much as he does or, Absolutely. Or, or is talked about as much as he's so he's character. branding himself. <laughs> oh, he's got that brand. Whether you're watching the Indians or any other sporting event, a great place to do it is our favorite place, the Roxino. Let's see what's going on this week. Hey there, rock stars. I'm Becca, and this is What's Up at the Roxino. Let the spinning wheel spin at Hard Rock Roxino Northfield Park for your chance to win $1 million every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in March. Earn entries every day, three times on Tuesdays, to win a 2019 Mercedes GLC luxury SUV on March 31st. Don't forget to swipe your Rockstar Rewards card at any kiosk March 3rd through March 31st to win free play. Treat yourself to an amazing four-course meal special in Kozar's Wood-Fired Grill every Sunday through Thursday, featuring Kozar's famous petite filet or beer-battered walleye and starting at only $34.99. Don't miss 90s pop icon Amy Grant when she performs on the Hard Rock Live stage Friday, March 1st, and Lifehouse when they roll into town on Thursday, March 7th. Find your rhythm at the Hard Rock Roxino Northfield Park. Vegas Experience, Ohio Address. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this bounty in front of us. We are at one of my favorite places in the greater Cleveland area, and that is, of course, Kozar's Restaurant. This place is amazing. They have great food, but they also have great drinks. I am the humble guest of the man in charge here. What is your name, sir? Cyrus. Cyrus, and how long you been here at Kozar's? Almost a year now. Almost a year, good. And you, what do you think you uh, brought to the table as, uh, as the manager here? Well, I belong to a, a professional organization called the International Program Master Sommeliers. I'm a certified sommelier in the court. And what we bring to the table is what they call a sommelier-driven program. Okay. Put it in a nutshell, uh, craft cocktails and wines that are representing all the major wine regions in the world. Okay, so you, you know about tasteful drinks and, and fancy stuff that I am not aware of and the better part of Northeast Ohio is not aware of. Correct. You know, basically our philosophy is you've done your work during the day, relax, we'll take it from here. You just enjoy it. Just Not, be adventurous. Do you find it frustrating as somebody with an advanced palate who knows about all this stuff when you come and try and present us with fancy stuff and we're just like, I'd rather have an MGD. Does that bother you at all? You want to have chicken with a big red? It's your money. <laughs> you go and have a good time. Thank you. All right. Well, you have made some fan. You've uh, commissioned some fancy drinks from your bar team here. Why don't you explain to me? Uh, Let's we'll start with this one. What am I uh, about to try here? Okay. Uh, uh, sangria is a big uh, cocktail for us, and uh, we carry it in different versions of it. But fall and winter, we decided to do something different. Usually, a sangria, the base is either red or white wine along with liquors. We decided to give it a twist. This one has hard apple cider as the base. Hard apple cider, nice. So, going to give right. it a try. Great, we're going to do that. And wh what else is in here um, other than the hard apple cider? Well, there is uh, also amaretto and brandy and uh, some uh, apple cider as well. Mm. It's easy drinking, fall and winter. I think fall and winter flavors, warmer, yes. more uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, and all that flavor. That is really good. And I've had, obviously, terrible sangria, like mixed in a got cooler in college, and this is totally different from that. And the dangerous thing about uh, tasting good things after you've had so many bad things like I have is now I have a taste for it and everything's going to taste worse. That's why I don't like to experience nice things. Does that uh, make sense? No, I think something tells me you do like nice okay, things. Now we're uh, good. Thank now you. We're good. Thank you. I do have a taste for that, but that's amazing, absolutely amazing. And people can get this here. Yes. And can you get it at any of the bars in this place, or is that specific to Kozar's? I think Kozar gives us a platform to play with things and produce really craft items. Uh, cafe or other bar, bars have their own uh, they have programs. Their own personalities and whatnot. I did notice, though, that these things are so fancy 
like these particular, some of these liquors, you actually had to have one of your uh, bartenders get up on a ladder to get it. That's how you know something is really good if somebody has to get up on a ladder to go and get I mean, it. We really fine top shelf, really. Yes, top shelf, <laughs> very good. <laughs> Those drinks are great, everybody. Uh, wait, don't go anywhere because we've got our good friends, Big Chuck and Little John, <laughs> who are coming up next. Are you looking forward to it, Tom? Absolutely. All right. Uh, thank you so much for filling in. You did you. admirably, as always. Thank you for being there for thank us. Thank you. Uh, Tony, come back soon. We love you. Firefighters, troops, say a prayer. Good night, everybody.